Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a review of the new HTC One M8 Google Play Edition. Is this the smartphone for you? Last year's HTC One was an incredibly impressive device, and the M8 cranks it up to 11. At first glance, it looks almost identical, especially in the silver that the Google Play Edition comes in. Unlike the vast majority of Android phones, HTC opted to go with an almost entirely aluminum body for the One, and it looks and feels fantastic. One change between the new One and the old One is the sides. So there's now actually metal that wraps all the way around the edge of the phone, as opposed to having a plastic band that wraps around it. Some people aren't a big fan of this, as it does mean it can be a bit more slippery in the hand, especially with the brushed metal finish, although I think it's an improvement. One thing I would change is the button placement, as the power button is still up top, meaning it's a bit awkward to reach when you're holding the phone in one hand. In fact, the One M8 is actually a little bit more unwieldy all around, as it is both wider as well as taller than last year. It's got a nice weight, which while it feels like it could take a decent drop, makes it a bit awkward when trying to manage in normal use. In exchange for the bulk, you have a 5 inch screen and the fantastic boom sound speakers, which have been improved on the new M8. Today in Mountain View, Google gave us our first close look at Project Aura. The general idea is to bring all the great customization that a PC has to smartphones. If you were to imagine a smartphone for the next 5 billion people, what would it look like? It would be inexpensive. There's really just no comparison. Instead of putting a single speaker on the back or on the side, you have two very nice sounding speakers that are pointing directly at you, making the listening experience so much better. Like seriously, can everyone just steal this? Please? There are also some nice touches, including a micro SD card slot, which allows you to expand the 32 gigs of storage with up to an additional 128 gigs. There's also the integrated IR blaster behind the power button that lets even the Google Play edition of the phone control the TV or stereo after a quick setup. It might be a small thing, but I appreciate the micro USB and headphone jack being on the bottom now, which makes things a lot less cluttered when I use the M8 in the car. The screen is slightly bigger than last year while keeping the same 1080p resolution, but that's absolutely not a complaint. This is one of the best displays on any phone, period. Color is rich and more importantly accurate, viewing angles are fantastic, and it's noticeably more responsive than most devices. It's hard to explain, but it feels like there's less delay between tapping or swiping and something actually happening than before on the M8. Take a look around back and you might notice something a little different as there are now two rear facing cameras. The dual camera allows you to do a few things, such as snap a picture and then refocus it later on inside the HTC camera app. It definitely varies depending on the subject, as I found portraits to be the only time where it really looked nice. Oftentimes it would look very fake, with patches of the image not blurred correctly, if there wasn't a very clear subject. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much better. So this camera wasn't amazing last year, and it's actually slightly worse this year, as they removed the optical image stabilization. While the original one was awesome in low light, now it's really not any better than what you would be able to get out of a Galaxy S5 or iPhone 5S. There's a lot of softening going on that kills most of the noise and the expensive detail, again not really delivering better results than the competition. Get some decent light and things improve, but having only 4 megapixels to work with makes the files only really decent for sharing on the web. Side by side with the iPhone or Galaxy S5, there's not much contest. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely usable, and you can get some cool shots out of the dual camera, but considering how great the rest of the phone is, the fact that the camera is only just decent is kind of disappointing. As a Google Play Edition device, you're looking at an experience that's basically what you would find on a Nexus, with the benefit of guaranteed quick updates to new versions of Android as they're released. There are a few changes though, such as the addition of some of the gestures from the normal M8 that allow you to double tap or swipe on the screen to unlock the phone. They work reasonably well, however I found it activating in my pocket quite a few times, so I ended up disabling it. I won't go too in depth on the benchmarks, but the One M8 does very well across the board, matching the similarly specced Galaxy S5, and showing a nice improvement over the last generation Galaxy S4 and One M7 on the graphics side as well. Battery life is excellent. Thanks to the power sipping Snapdragon 801 inside, I was able to get through some pretty long days with over 6 hours of screen on time without the M8 giving up on me. While the name might be a mouthful, the HTC One M8 Google Play Edition is a fantastic phone. It brings a killer build together with a great screen, awesome speakers, rock solid battery, and delicious stock KitKat. The camera is a disappointment, however considering just how good the rest of the phone is, I have no problem recommending it to you guys, and in fact I'll probably be using it as my main phone for quite a while. So what do you guys think? Is the Google Play Edition M8 worth it? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.